I'm joined now by Michael Klein, an analyst focusing on issues in Africa. And I want to get your reaction to this report by Amnesty International, because it is getting a, a bit of press, isn't it? Yeah, it's thankfully um, drawing attention back to Darfur and Sudan, uh, something that was a one of the first rallying cries of the Internet age, really drew public attention uh, to the Save Darfur campaign. Um, uh, led the International Criminal Court to its first indictment of a sitting head of state and one of the world's largest peacekeeping missions. But flash forward about uh, 13 years, public attention has been uh, diverted um, in some ways. Uh, the ICC, International Criminal Court, uh, hasn't been able to bring Bashir in. And even the peacekeeping mission um, is being drawn down to uh, pick up other conflicts in the world. Were you surprised at this report? Or, uh, I mean, it, we know that there's savagery out there, but uh, were you kind of even astonished at this latest report? Yeah, the report um, details some really uh, shocking and hard to read or uh, uh, imagine um, uh, chemical weapon attacks. Amnesty International has put it up on a really great interactive website that viewers can check out. Um, it's both, even though there's not video necessarily like in the Syria case, it's both shocking and surprising because the world didn't necessarily know that Sudan had this capability. What about monitoring this region? Is it difficult to do, do so? I mean, uh, talk to us a little bit about it. This is a very remote region in central Darfur, um, and the amnesty report was done remotely because uh, they, they do not have access themselves to it for a few reasons. Uh, number one, it's very insecure. There are aerial bombardments. It's very remote, no infrastructure, and the government restricts access to a very few amount of people. So they're going to need to get both investigators in there um, to ascertain whether this, uh, these allegations are really true uh, with the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, as well as reintroduce uh, UN peacekeepers if uh, there's going to be progress. You mentioned attention span. It seems like we all, our attention span shifts. Uh, of course, the Syria crisis has really dominated the news, the migrant crisis, and, and this has kind of been left out. Is there enough being done uh, on the international stage, and what more can be done when it comes to Darfur? Well, that's right. I, I hate to think that public consciousness is a zero-sum game, but I think there is some reckoning there between uh, ongoing conflicts in Sudan and other places in Africa, Syria, Yemen, other parts of the world. Uh, that have seen a proliferation in the, over the past decade. Um, it is just like the Save Darfur campaign 13 years ago was rooted in uh, public awareness. I think it's going to take that again to mobilize um, the international community, uh, drive some AU member or African nations to pursue uh, Bashir, which um, uh, we saw public opinion turning in that direction somewhat in South Africa after they let him get away and also to um, uh, uh, push the UN Security Council conversation, which actually just took place today, where Sudan is trying to boast that the Darfur conflict is, out of, is under control um, with some iterant ceasefires that really don't mean much on the ground, and that therefore they deserve to draw down uh, peacekeeping troops and take over security themselves. You brought it up, Bashir, a sitting president, uh, two arrest warrants out for him, and yet nothing's happened. Uh, what are your thoughts on that and why? It shows the rather impotence of the International Criminal Court in a region where, uh, for maybe some obvious reasons, a lot of states have not signed on to the uh, Rome Convention that uh, implements its indictments. Um, there is some um, optimism that even though he got away in South Africa, um, a South African group successfully sued the government um, to uh, decry that ex post facto as an illegal um, measure that they did not arrest him, um, but it's going to take more buy-in from African states if he's ever going to be brought to justice in Europe. Yeah, I heard the word optimism thrown out there. Are, are you optimistic about the future for Darfur, or, or what are your thoughts? I mean, we've seen this language for so long. What needs to happen? I think if we remember that just because we turn away from something, just because there's not video on uh, the television um, or the news, that something doesn't stop happening. Um, so, if we keep um, at least um, you know some uh, baseline uh, activism uh, and turn more attention to Darfur and Sudan, that uh, there could be some progress and they could maybe stimmy some of the anti-peacekeeping uh, uh, prerogatives that we see right now at the UN. So that spotlight will keep the heat on in a sense. Uh, 
and that's what's needed. Well, Michael, thanks so much for coming in and talking to us. Certainly appreciate it. Thanks for bringing attention to this issue, Mike.